What's up guys, this is Wences. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about creating an epic life on your terms. Today we're talking about INFJs and childhood trauma, how to cope with it and how to thrive through it. See, I've been looking into my childhood drama for a long time because I know I as an INFJ have a lot to deal with. There's a lot I had to uncover, but because I was able to do that, my life changed tremendously. It has an effect on absolutely everything because it really keeps your reality stuck at that moment. There are a lot of things that are hard for us to let go. And so through a lot of research in trial and error, I figured out the ways that work best for me and I've worked with my clients through them. And so today I wanna share them with you so you can tackle painful childhood memories and transform the narrative in order to feel empowered. Before we get started, I wanna remind you, if you wanna take the next step in creating your epic life, then join the bootcamp or work with me privately, all the information you find below. As we all know, children, INFJs or not, absorb absolutely everything from their environment. Our critical thinking has not been developed so much. And so no matter what happens, it has such a big effect on us. We all know that. But for us as INFJs, it's even more apparent because how is our functional stack built like, right? We have first introverted intuition, then extroverted feeling, introverted thinking, and then extroverted sensing. And each one of those functions gets developed later in life. So the first thing we have is introverted introverted intuition. And it's the strongest function that we have. And when we're small, it is that much more dominant because the other ones haven't even developed to any kind of extent we are able to use them now. So what does that mean? That means that everything that happens to us, we absorb as one of our own memories. It's our way of looking at life. And I've had memories with me that I didn't even know were that strong or that had such a big effect on me until I was really forced to look at that situation over and over again because I kept putting myself in situations which made me relive that. So I hope you all are aware of this. Every single time we get ourselves into any kind of drama in our life, it's because it reminds us of something that happened when we were children and we're still trying to relive that. We're trying to find meaning in it and we're trying to solve that puzzle, something that happened back then. And because our mind wants to protect us when we're children, we cannot find a way to cope with it. We cannot find a way to explain to us why maybe maybe mom had to go to work or why those kids didn't like us at that moment. So we make up a story that helps us to not feel abandoned. So it is, for example, oh, I did something wrong. It's not that I'm unlovable. It's just that I have to act a certain way in order to be accepted. And it doesn't matter if it's your parents. It doesn't matter if it's your surrounding, your peers, any kind of like teachers. And it's probably most of the time not even their fault. No matter where we're at and how well of a childhood we have experienced, it's barely impossible possible to not get out of childhood while having those traumas within us and to carry them with us. So why is it even necessary to transform them, to change the narrative, to go through them? Can't we just say, oh, that's in the past and now I'm an adult and it's all good? Yes, you can definitely do that if you're excited about your future. If you feel like I'm in a reality where I can't wait to wake up the next day and tackle the day. I love my life. My life is full of excitement and there's nothing missing. If that's the way you feel about life, then you probably have a really good way of coping with childhood trauma. But most of us don't. Most of the INFJs I talk to feel like something is missing. And that's how I felt. I felt like, who cares what kind of job I do? Why should I go for that better position or move to another country or try to have better friendships? I'm still gonna feel how I feel now, which is that life is just boring, that there's nothing exciting coming, that I just have to be okay with what's going on that's reality and it's never gonna get any better. I felt that way because I was living in a box and I was not aware of that. I can tell you now because I've stepped out of that box that I had been living in that box. And it's a difficult concept for a lot of INFJs to understand and to accept because we're everything but in the box thinkers. We're the people who think outside of the box. We're the people who don't wanna conform. We're the people who wanna create that reality that is just for us. And still I can tell you all of us live in boxes and all of us are able to overcome a box 
over and over again. And as long as you feel like I have learned everything there is to learn, there is no more layer to me to uncover, we're always going to be stuck at the same place. So the moment I understood I had to change things, that's when everything started getting better. I understood that those things that happened back then, even if most of them I'm not aware of, it's time that I understand them. It's time that I look at them and understand how they have an effect on my life today. It wasn't that I woke up one day and said, okay, today I'm going to start focusing on childhood trauma and to overcome it. It never happened this way. I felt like I was okay, but I was really forced to a point where I had to bring out something in me that I felt is completely unlovable. I had to start fighting for myself. I had to stick up for myself. And that also meant to show my dark side. It meant to show that part of me that I felt is too much for my environment. And then I started to look into why do I even feel this way? What is that about? Because it's probably not about the situation that's happening currently because it's not the first time that happened. I've been in that situation with other people before and it's like I'm playing the same game over and over again thinking I'm going to be too much. I can show that side of me. And most of the time the reason why we feel this way is because in childhood we have learned in order to not be abandoned, in order to be accepted, to have social inclusion, in order to be protected and loved, we have to play a certain role. We have to play in that box and our mind wanted to protect us back then. So it had created something in our mind that tells us if you act this way, you will feel all the abandonment that you could ever imagine. Nobody would ever love you again. Nobody would ever accept you again. And when I was forced to bring that side out of me, it definitely felt this way. It didn't feel like, okay, this is just one person who's not going to like me. It felt like once this is out, I cannot hide anymore that this is who I truly am. And to be honest, I'm so ashamed of that part of me because that is not a lovable side. But once I got through that, I understood that there's a pattern and that there is not just this one thing that's going on. It's these things that happen over and over again. And if we understand how to look at them and how to transform those memories, we can create amazing things because every single time you're able to overcome one of those traumas and with overcoming, I mean that you allow yourself to be faced with them right now and you're able to sit with them, to feel the pain that happened back then that back then you weren't able to cope with so you put it somewhere in the back of your mind you created this little box for you where you had to stay stuck in that's where you felt safe but now as adults if we find a way to bring that forward and to sit with that pain, that pain that actually has nothing to do with the current situation, but the pain that was happening back then. And back then we just abandoned the thought and we're able to sit with it, go through it. After that, we're on a different level of freedom because we never ever again have to play in this box. There are a lot of things I keep on learning, but one thing I know for sure is that this system is reality. I know this like nothing else because I've gone through it so often. I have worked with my clients on this. We have topics around this in boot camp. I know what this is about. So if you're in a situation where you feel like no matter what you do, your life won't get better because it doesn't feel any better. Trust me. It's because of that. It's because of any kind of beliefs that we keep carrying with us that keep us stuck. And so once you know that, how do you approach it? Well, it's a very simple method that I learned through various resources and that make it quite easy to duplicate and no matter what kind of situation you are. So if you start your day and you have any kind of emotions come up because you get rejected in any kind of situation, you feel ashamed for speaking up, you have any kind of feeling that's negative, start first to analyze where is this emotion coming from? Where do you feel it in your body? Because we do carry emotions in our tissues. It always gets stuck there and it's always on different places. We all have different areas where we store emotions, but we all have the same place where we keep the same emotion hidden. So for example, when I feel anger, no matter what, I always feel it in my throat. When I feel like I'm not expressing myself and something is holding me back, I feel it in my throat area. So 
any kind of situation where you feel like, okay, now I have to hold my tongue or there's something I don't want to say, or it's a situation where you feel passive aggressive feelings because you're being treated unfairly and you want to say something, but you feel like you can't because of the consequences. In most cases, you will feel it in your throat. Some of us don't, but it will be the same place every single time. Similarly, if you have an emotion of abandonment or not being accepted or sadness or loneliness, you will feel it in your chest most of the time. As I said, for some people, it's a little bit different, but it will always be the same place. So if you, for example, feel your sadness in your stomach, you'll always feel it in your stomach. But most of us have it anger and that you want to keep something hidden at saying in your throat, abandonment, sadness, loneliness in your chest and fear is in your stomach. So when you're afraid of the consequences of what's going to happen, you will feel it in your stomach area. And every single time this happens to you. So for example, you get a male and it makes you feel shocked at that moment. Then there is a negative emotion coming up. Listen to your body and understand where it's at. So this is the first emotion, then understanding, okay, so this apparently is the fear that I'm not speaking up. It's a situation where you say, I want to say something, but I'm not allowed to. I build up anger that I don't want to express because for some kind of reason, we have been taught a long time ago that that's the safest way to go. The next step in this situation is to think about what this really is about. When was the first time you felt that? When was the first time you can remember feeling this exact feeling? And you think chronologically when you were a little child up to maybe when you were 15, let's say it's a good time period to look into. So, and then you remember and you start writing these things down and then you understand, oh, okay, so this probably happened the first time when I was four and I was with my dad and this situation happened and I had to stay quiet because otherwise I would make him mad and therefore I I wouldn't be loved by him or I would be scolded or whatever it is. And it doesn't always have to be the first one. So sometimes we're not able to look into that first trauma that happened, but maybe we can think of a situation that happened a couple of years later when we were with friends. It's still much closer to the origin than it is right now. So once you're in that situation, it's time for forgiveness, but not only for forgiveness. I have learned specifically as INFJs before we can tackle forgiveness in that situation, which is very important because every single time you get to forgive that person, you get to look at it from a different perspective. You get to see, thank you so much for showing me this, that I don't need to listen to this. I don't need to carry this pain with me. I get to be excited about who I am today because of the things I was able to overcome, right? This is how we get there. We don't need to be with that person that hurt us ever again. We don't need to have a relationship with them. And very often, one of the best ways for us to be able to forgive somebody is to create distance and to say, well, that way I can really let this go and be happy with it is when I don't have a relationship with that person. But here comes a twist. And I believe that this is very important for INFJs. We also have to start setting up for ourselves. This has a lot to do with our dark side. This has a lot to do with SE because this is the function we developed last. This is the thing we learned the latest. So probably in a lot of those situations, we would have wanted somebody who sticks up for us. And there was nobody. We didn't stick up for ourselves and there was nobody doing it for us. So what we can do in that situation, and I found this extremely helpful. I have taken a picture of myself as a little girl and I recommend this to all of my clients. So you take a picture of yourself when you were a little child so you can see the tenderness of this child's heart. You can see how they may have suffered. And then you're so aware of the pain that she or he had to endure during that time, right? So you imagine that situation how that little person, your little child, like you as a little child is standing in that situation and is sad or feeling abandoned or anything that really hurts that little kid. And then you show up in that picture. You have to be the one who is now the adult who's going to protect your inner child. So you stand up and you say to the person who bullied you, who put you down, who didn't give you what you wanted, what were you thinking? Like you really confront that person and you protect your little child. It's like you exchange the story because that inner child, it still lives with us. We have parts of us that are that age when that trauma happened. And in order to make that part vanish and grow up, we as our adult selves, we have to be the ones who say, I'm going to protect you from this. I'm so 
sorry you had to go through this and I wasn't there to protect you, but I promise you from now on, I will do this. Because if you keep telling yourself, oh, this never happened or it wasn't that bad, it's like you're denying that little child's truth. It's like saying you're lying. And so you keep on repeating the story over and over again and you never get to tackle it. So it's important that you acknowledge what happened, that you understand that the pain you're feeling currently most of the time has nothing to do with the situation because it keeps on reoccurring. And it's probably not something that somebody else would get upset with. It's so uniquely you, that situation, that thing that makes you feel ashamed. So where does this come from? Where's the origin from that? Then you put yourself back in that situation and you as your adult self, protect that little child. It's important to get that out, to allow yourself to be angry because only once you allow yourself to be angry and to direct it to the person who caused that pain back then, you can then go to the next step, which is the forgiveness practice. I have a video on this. You can look for it. It's like how to forgive, I think. And put in a nutshell, it's really about forgiving the other person, forgiving yourself for taking that pain on, being thankful for that situation and saying, I love you. That always helps to change the narrative in your mind. Don't disregard it because it sounds like, oh, so easily done, or this is just like something that's not gonna really change the reality that I'm living in right now. Trust me, it will. It changed my life completely. I see it over and over again when I work with my clients. Don't disregard it because it sounds so easy. But for us as INFJs particularly, it's extremely important to go through both of those steps. So the anger part, allowing yourself to express the anger, being now the one who starts protecting your inner child back then. Because once you learn how to do that, you'll start protecting that inner child in these situations again. So you don't put yourself in situations where you get constantly hurt. So for example, if you believe I don't deserve to feel safe, you're constantly going to go out on the limb and be around people who don't show you that appreciate you, who always leave you in a situation where you wonder, am I being liked or am I not being liked? If you're being the adult, you're in our child, you don't even go in these situations. But it's very hard to understand those things once you're in that box, right? So every single time you get to experience an emotion, it gives you a key to look into childhood trauma, to overcome that and know that every single time it helps you in your personal development journey. It helps you to open up another box to get bigger and to be more abundant. Okay. So I really hope that helped you. Let me know in the comments if you want to know more about this. And remember, if you want to take the next step in creating your epic life, join the bootcamp or work with me privately, the information you find below. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, watch the video on the INFJ dark side, because the moment you start integrating that, it helps you to overcome that childhood trauma as well. It has a lot to do with that anger part. So like always, guys, I wish you a wonderful day, a great week, and I talk to you next time. Bye.